Item Number SCP-4014 Object Class Neutralized Special Containment Procedures as of July 11th, 1979, SCP-4014 is to be considered neutralized. The following are the archived containment procedures for SCP-4014. SCP-4014 is to be discontinued from use. Publicly, a cover story involving failing solar arrays and a rapidly decaying orbit is to be circulated by NASA as the reason for the cessation of further missions. Observation of SCP-4014 is to be done with orbital satellite MIMIR-1. Information gathered is to be shared with NASA at the discretion of the O5 Council. Various scientific periodicals are to publish fictitious reports describing a recently discovered solar phenomenon in which artificial satellites are temporarily obscured from observation. Description SCP-4014 is the American space station Skylab, launched in 1973 by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration for conducting manned experiments in Earth's orbit. SCP-4014 was designed to house up to three crew members. SCP-4014 is host to a variety of anomalous activity with no apparent source. The anomalous activity serves as the onset for a phase event, in which SCP-4014 will disappear from its orbit around the Earth. Phase events occur with no set timing, and typically last for several days to weeks. At the conclusion of a phase event, SCP-4014 will return to its projected orbital path. In all cases, the crew on board will not be present upon its return. In all observed cases, the re-entry module or space capsule will also be missing. Addendum Neutralization Following the events of Incident 4014-10, see below, all planned missions to SCP-4014 were cancelled, and SCP-4014 was considered abandoned by NASA. Over the next few years, SCP-4014 continued to experience phase events, albeit with decreased frequency. In 1978, NASA confirmed that SCP-4014 had experienced rapid orbital decay beyond expected projections, and was slated to re-enter Earth's atmosphere around July 11, 1979. As predicted, SCP-4014 entered the Earth's atmosphere on July 11th, breaking up over the Pacific Ocean. A combined Foundation and NASA operation was able to secure 97% of the wreckage, which was deemed non-anomalous in nature. After observation, the remains of SCP-4014 were reclassified as neutralized. Addendum Reported SCP-4014 Incidents 1 through 8 May 30th, 1973. The crew of SCP-4014 reports a repetitive knocking sound on the door of the airlock module, as well as the observation window. A source is never identified. Knowledge of the incident is internally suppressed by various administrators within NASA. June 1st, 1973. During a routine spacewalk, crew member John Wilkins reports a pushing sensation on his back before he is ejected from SCP-4014. In the half hour it takes for his crewmates to retract his emergency tether, John is seemingly tugged around in multiple directions, as if by force. June 7, 1973 the Soviet Orion 2 space telescope experiences an almost total systems failure when its orbit approaches SCP-4014. The crew of the Orion 2 is reportedly killed when they attempt to evacuate. The incident is quickly covered up and covertly classified by the Soviet Union. Political repercussions are avoided by the intervention of both the Foundation and GRU Division P. Soviet leadership is given heavily redacted information regarding SCP-4014, expressly without approval of NASA or the United States. June 9, 1973 The crew of SCP-4014 reports they are unable to visually perceive planet Earth. This lasts for 24 hours. June 13, 1973 NASA loses contact with SCP-4014 for approximately four hours. Upon the re-establishment of radio contact, 
all onboard cameras are found to have stopped working. June 15, 1973 Crew aboard SCP-4014 report the presence of a fourth crewmate, but are unable to provide exact details regarding the individual. The unknown entity eventually opens the airlock module, steps inside, and is not reported again. June 19, 1973 President Richard Nixon is briefed on SCP-4014 and expresses concern over the mental health of those on board, as well as the danger posed by the anomalous activity. Due to events unrelated to SCP-4014, communications between the Foundation and the White House break down, and Nixon orders those aboard SCP-4014 back to Earth. June 22, 1973 the crew of SCP-4014 prepares for departure. When the Command and Service Module detaches for re-entry procedure, SCP-4014 undergoes a phase event which lasts for two and a half hours. When the phase event ends, the module fails to return with the rest of SCP-4014. The crew is considered missing in action. Addendum Incident 4014-9 Following the loss of the original NASA astronaut crew, the Foundation drew up plans to conduct experiments with SCP-4014. Based on the assumption that the module had failed to return because it had been detached during the phase event, the O5 Council voted in favor of conducting further manned missions. Tensions between the Foundation and President Richard Nixon reached their height in August of 1973, partly in response to Foundation activity both for and against the United States as well as the Soviet Union. On August 23rd, President Nixon authorized NASA to carry out its second planned Skylab mission. Foundation requests for involvement were diplomatically ignored, and the mission commenced on August 25th with the launch of a Saturn 1B rocket. Ten minutes into the docking procedure, SCP-4014 became partially intangible, causing the Command and Service Module to drift into the space it formerly occupied. Radio transmissions from the crew indicated no adverse effects as a result. Approximately one hour after the start of the incident, a phase event occurred, lasting 26 days. The crew as well as the Service and Command Module were missing upon the return of SCP-4014. President Nixon, in a diplomatic gesture, asked the Foundation to conduct cover-up operations, removing the record of the second Skylab mission from public knowledge. This was accomplished through a Joint Foundation and Unusual Incidents Unit operation. Addendum Incident 4014-10 Due to the loss of two Command and Service Modules, NASA was unable to conduct further Skylab missions. The Foundation reached out to the Soviet Union and made an agreement to reach SCP-4014 using a Russian Proton-K rocket in exchange for sharing any information gathered. Three D-Class with military history were selected and given brief astronaut training. D-4K-01, D-4K-02, and D-4K-03. On November 16, 1973, the Proton K successfully reached SCP-4014. The crew was ordered to prepare themselves for a phase event and set up a series of cameras and audio devices. Three days later, on November 19, a phase event occurred and contact with SCP-4014 was lost. The phase event lasted for 39 days and resulted in further political turmoil between the Foundation, the White House, and the Soviet Union. Upon return, the crew of SCP-4014, as well as the Soyuz Descent Module, were reported missing. Roughly six years later, on January 1, 1980, a series of video recordings were transmitted to NASA Mission Control and quickly secured by the Foundation. They have been transcribed below. Video Log 1 Begin Log T plus 1 Minute the camera focuses on the observation window of SCP-4014. D4K01 is seen looking out. He points at the camera, then to the window, and gives a thumbs up. T plus 5 minutes. D4K02 is shown gathering supplies. D4K03, who is presumed to be operating the camera, asks if they should bring anything else. D4K02 points at the camera and replies with, Plenty of tape. T plus 47 minutes. 
The camera cuts to D4KO1 and D4KO2, pushing duffel bags through the observation module. D4KO1 motions towards the observation window, stating, Get a good shot. T plus 49 minutes. D4KO3 films out of the window for several minutes. T plus 58 minutes. The camera is set down, observing a wall marked with 38 tally marks. End log. Video log 2. Begin log. T plus 1 minute. D4KO1 and D4KO2 are seen climbing into the Soyuz descent module. The camera follows them inside, before D4KO3 presumably closes the hatch. T plus 4 hours 5 minutes. The hatch opens, and light filters in. D4KO3 climbs out with the camera. He films what appears to be an ocean expanding in every direction. D4KO1 is seen climbing out as well, and motions towards a distant shape, stating, Land Ahoy. T plus 8 hours 47 minutes. The shape in the distance is now closer, and is confirmed to be a coastline. D4KO1 and D4KO2 are seen with makeshift paddles aboard an emergency raft. T plus 10 hours 13 minutes. The coast takes up the majority of the camera frame. Off camera, D4KO3 asks, Now what? To which there is no reply. End log. Video log 3. Begin log. T plus 1 minute. D4KO1 and D4KO2 are seen walking through a forest. The camera focuses on the ground, revealing a patchwork of different types of grass, soil, and sod. T plus 1 hour 23 minutes. D4KO1 motions the others to stop. He points at several trees, noting that they appear to be completely identical. He also notes that there has been no sign of wildlife since their arrival. T plus 2 hours 9 minutes. The group stops for a break. D4KO2 and D4KO3 discuss the features of the surrounding landscape, while D4KO1 organizes their remaining supplies. T plus 3 hours 25 minutes. The group sets out again. D4KO3 stops the tape as night falls. End log. Video log 4. Begin log. T plus 1 minute. The camera turns and points at what appears to be an abandoned shack. D4KO1 is heard arguing against entering, stating that it shouldn't be there. D4KO2 argues that they need shelter, while D4KO3 maintains a neutral opinion. Eventually, D4KO1 sets off on his own, and the others go with him. T plus one hour, one minute. The group approaches a shack identical to the one seen earlier. D4KO1 begins to accuse D4KO2 of taking them in circles, but is reminded that he has been leading the group. D4KO3 notes the geography is slightly different around the building. The group decides to move onward. T plus 2 hours, 1 minute. The group encounters the same shack as before. D4KO2 and D4KO3 argue that they should look inside, and D4KO1 relents. The camera shows D4KO2 approach the entrance, and then cuts off. End log. Video log 5. Begin log. T plus one minute. D4KO3 is shown standing in a doorway. T plus ten minutes. The footage cuts to D4KO2 entering the shack. The interior is cluttered, but there are no objects with recognizable labels or branding. D4KO1 is heard exclaiming something, and the camera turns around. T plus thirty-four minutes. The camera is obscured by the floor, but vague yelling is heard. T plus 36 minutes. D4KO3 is observed running through the forest. He points the camera behind him, and the trees are observed closing in around him. T plus 47 minutes. The same shack is observed. D4KO3 is heard weeping. He turns the camera around, and the same shack is shown on his side. He repeats the gesture, with the shack always appearing in the direction he faces. T plus 50 minutes. The camera is placed on a table, and D4KO3 is seen laying on the floor in a fetal position. The walls of the shack begin to shake, and the floor is observed cracking. T plus one hour. 
The floor splits open as a massive sinkhole emerges, swallowing D4KO3 and the building whole. T plus one hour, four minutes. The camera finally lands, and the lens cracks. The still bodies of D4KO1 and D4KO2 can be observed lying nearby. Next to them are several decaying spacesuits. A few of the suits are emblazoned with a gold hammer and sickle. T plus 4 hours, 26 minutes. The same scene is recorded for several hours. At one point, movement is detected, but the camera runs out of film shortly after. End log. Thank you guys so much for watching, and a huge thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. Special shout out to my level 4 patrons, Alexis the Great, Lesby Friends, and Scrubversive. If you would like to see your name at the end of my videos, see my videos early, and get some other cool perks, head on over to patreon.com slash drmaxwell, link in the description.